Hello and welcome to this edition of Hack Naked TV for February 12th, 2016. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and today we're going to talk about Google warning users of insecure email usage. We're going to talk about selling your creds for fun and profit, and we're going to talk about uh, a new vulnerability in Cisco ASAs you're probably going to want to go patch right now. As always, Hack Naked TV is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Contact consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com for a quote today. All right. Let's talk about selling your corporate credentials for cash. So some Apple employees actually uh, reported this week that they were offered the upwards of like 23 grand just for a credential to log on to the Apple corporate network. Now, uh, you know, for an attacker, this completely bypasses any sort of external attacks they would have had to, to go through. Uh, they're not gonna have to like try to go fish a user anymore. Um, you know, having that first initial foothold into a network is really probably the toughest part an attacker has. Once once an attacker has an initial foothold into any network, uh, most of the time it's fairly easy to start pivoting around and escalate privileges from even a very basic account. Um, so, you know, the fact that they're they're starting to just buy accounts, um, you know, that's kind of a kind of scary deal because it really highlights the whole insider threat um, and that, you know, it's, it's a pretty hard thing to detect, you know? I mean, uh, you, you would eventually probably uh, be able to um, correlate it back to the user that sold their credential to the attacker if something did indeed happen. But, um, you know, for, for the sake of, uh, of uh, whatever the attacker is wanting to get out of their attack, they probably would be able to get away with it pretty much under the radar um, because it's all coming from valid user accounts unless they're just, you know, blowing up uh, red flags on, on, on the network. So uh, the, the Apple employee, one of the Apple employees actually said, uh, that these attackers were specifically targeting someone who uh, jumped diagonally within the company to uh, something like a junior management position and not necessarily like somebody that's been there like for 20 years and has been, you know, a lifer with the company because those people are loyal and they probably wouldn't give up their cred. And, um, you know, then you, you kind of create that situation where that person's going to, you know, then go report it to everyone else. So the, the attackers are kind of being smart about who they're targeting. They're targeting somebody that might have a little bit of power, like a manager, um, but somebody that hasn't been there long. So uh, really interesting story there. So uh, Gmail or Google has started, uh, they're, they're, they're planning on starting to warn users of Gmail that somebody else is using uh, insecure email. Uh, so what I mean by that is that if, if you go to send an email now with Gmail to somebody that is using a quote unquote insecure email, uh, email client or service, which means basically they're either using something that doesn't support TLS or encryption. Uh, you're going to start seeing a little red lock on the top of each each uh, each email, um, indicating that 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 person is using an insecure service. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, any any emails you receive from a sender that cannot be authenticated uh, to any specific service, Google's going to start putting like a question mark over their normal profile photo, saying, "Hey, uh, you know, this might be kind of suspicious." Uh, be careful. So that's kind of kind of a cool thing Google's doing. Um, just just a heads up there. IRS pin compromise. So uh, 101,000 pins uh, to file taxes electronically were were able to be accessed by attackers. H how they did this is they basically went to the IRS.gov website and they they submitted over I think it was like is 464,000 valid social security numbers that they had gained from somewhere else. Um, you know probably OPM breach or some, something like that. Um, <clears throat> they actually got 101,000 valid pins back. And so what can you do with a pin? For uh, somebody who is trying to commit identity theft or fraud, they can go file your taxes with that pin. It's, it's basically the, the code you need to submit uh, a tax and, and potential or a tax form and, and potentially get a, a tax return from it. So the idea is like they're, you know, they've now got 101 valid pins to go submit uh, taxes. Luckily, the IRS kind of caught it, and uh, they, they did mention that no personal information was gained, but I mean, hey, these guys already had pretty much everything they needed to get uh, whatever they, they needed to file taxes. Um, the IRS is warning the victims, so hopefully if uh, one of these victims hasn't actually, you know, filed their taxes yet, which, you know, if they've got the pin and they haven't, um, that uh, they would, you know, be able to you know, figure out how to stop the attackers from, you know, illegally filing somebody else's taxes for them. So uh, that's kind of kind of an interesting story, too. Um, Cisco ASA RCE. So 
Cisco actually announced this week that their ASA devices uh, are vulnerable to a remote code execution vulnerability, which um, the issue is actually in how the devices reassemble uh, fragmented Ike v1 and Ike v2 packets. So if, if an, a remote attacker, somebody on, on the internet somewhere, sends these specifically crafted packets to a, a Cisco device, they can actually uh, create a, a remote code execution uh, exploit and take, take, control, take full control of the device. Um, so this is something that, you know, it affects over a million devices that are currently deployed all around the world. Um, so, you know, we see, we see Cisco ASAs all the time in pretty much every environment that we go to. So uh, if you are an, a company that owns a Cisco device, go patch your ASAs right now because it's likely that an attacker can gain full control of them remotely. All right, that's it for uh, this edition of Hack Naked TV. Uh, if you are planning to attend Black Hat Asia this year, uh, it's coming up in the end of March, uh, you, you're going to want to go sign up for uh, Brian Furman's course on advanced testing, evaluating, and breaking of security software. It's going to be a really awesome course. Go check it out. There's a link in the show notes. Uh, if you want to check out more Hack Naked TV, check out hacknaked.tv. We have the show notes at wiki.securityweekly.com. Um, I'm going to be speaking at SANS 2016 in Orlando on March 16th. Uh, we got B-Sides Orlando coming up. It's going to be awesome. Uh, you can email us at the show at hacknaked.tv. And I'm on Twitter at DAFTEC. Have a great weekend. Talk to you soon.